human conflict is as old as humanity itself. From time immemorial, humans have strived to resolve these conflicts sometimes in vain. From the medieval times of the Trojans and Greeks to the First and Second World War, human conflict has continued to destabilize societies and their nations. Precious as it is, peace is a necessity. With it comes stability and without it, all else is in vain. At the global stage, conflict resolution and peace restoration took a new dimension on 24th October 1945 when the United Nations Security Council was established. The United Nations Nairobi Office Director, Madam Zainab Hawa Bangura, explains further. When the United Nations was created after the Second World War and the Security Council established, the main responsibility of the Security Council is peace and security. So when there is a conflict in a country, the country becomes an agenda in the Security Council. It is during that monetary mechanism the Security Council decides to intervene, to participate. You know, they can participate either in a peace support operation, like you said, or, or peace enforcement. With the constant need to restore peace in various parts of the world, the number of UN peacekeepers has risen from 12,000 in the year 1996 to over 75,000 in 2022. The peacekeepers are drawn from over 121 UN member states, Kenya included. Upon gaining independence in 1963, Kenya immediately joined the UN and became part of the organization's troop contributing countries. Currently, 12 UN peacekeeping missions are underway, including five in Africa. Out of this, where does Kenya stand? Kenya has had a long history with the peacekeeping missions. And I believe uh, the first missions Kenya did was way back in 1979, starting with a mission in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, the, the, then it was uh, Rhodesia, you know, now Zimbabwe. After that, uh, Kenya has been uh, deployed in various other missions, up to 12, uh, looking at uh, within Africa, a region, and of course, outside Africa, uh, at least we have had uh, troops sent to uh, Yugoslavia, others to East Timor, uh, further across in West uh, Africa, uh, in uh, uh, Liberia, others in Sierra Leone. Uh, we was also had uh, within Eritrea, Sudan, and so on. Um, quite a number of uh, countries we have served. At the moment, we also still have a, a, a very good uh, footprint, uh, really, with a company, QRF company in uh, DRC Congo, and uh, a host of other officers, either deployed as uh, military observers, others deployed as uh, staff officers across uh, the world in different missions. With the changing dynamics of the conflict environment and the need for synchronized approaches in peacekeeping operations, training prior to deployment plays a pivotal role. Pre-deployment training is very, very vital for the success of a mission. But what I've seen of late that, for example, in the KDF, you have very good pre-deployment training now. You have various schools that prepare men and women, uh, officers and uh, other ranks, you know, for peacekeeping missions. IPSTC is a regional center of excellence that carries out training for military, police and civilian personnel in all aspects of peace operations. This is to enable um, participants of peacekeeping to respond to complex emergencies. In its quest to keep up with the multi-dimensional nature of peacekeeping operations, 
IPSTC incorporates the military, police and civilian components alike in all aspects of training. The multidimensional nature of peace support operations necessitates that we look at the roles that each of these components play, whether it is military, police or civilians. And the unique thing about IPSTC is that we have been able to incorporate these dimensions not only in the participants that we bring into the center, but in our trainers as well. So we have military, um, we bring in police officers as well as civilians to train at the center. Equipped with knowledge acquired from pre-deployment training, the KDF soldiers are now ready to deploy. What kind of skills are you looking for? When you have a peacekeeping mission, what is it that you need? You need engineers? Do you need doctors? Do you need uh, 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 foot soldiers? Exactly what are you looking for? And Kenya's challenge is to try to find the best skills and the best expertise and avail it to these peacekeeping missions in the world. KDF uh, is a very professional force. And so most of the persons that we send out there are professional enough to be able to uh, operate and uh, ensure the success of the mandate. The spectrum of Kenyan peacekeepers includes military, police and civilian experts who play various roles in peace processes across the world. The role of KDF is about defense of the Republic of Kenya. And when you defend, it does not just mean that you must defend from within. And that is looking at one of the key uh, interests of the state is to ensure that there is regional peace and security. In all missions, the police usually are, they are supposed to be there to protect the civilians. The police also in missions, they are supposed to do the restructuring and reforms of the local police. They also do the mentoring of the local police. They do community policing, that is uh, making sure that the local police and the community work together to achieve uh, their security. Then they also do crime mapping and analysis to get to know what is really happening on the ground so that they know how to go about it. Uh, they also do the vetting, the, the vetting selection and recruitment of the local police. Civilians are deployed in two major areas in a peacekeeping mission. Uh, the first area is what we call mission support and the second one is what we call the substantive section. Mission support is important because a mission has to be self-sustaining. So you have dedicated civilians working alongside the military who are actually making sure that the mission is sustaining itself. The other area is what we call the substantive sections. And this deals mostly with peace building because eventually our end goal is to pull out and leave a country that is standing on itself. So civilian expertise, including lawyers, including administrators, including uh, gender specialists are recruited, are recruited in the substantive areas in order to help the country back on its feet. Cumulatively, KDF soldiers form the bulk of Kenya's peacekeepers. Every conflict environment presents a unique experience and every peacekeeper has a story to tell. By extending our, 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 the message that we had, learning from one another, and uh, improving the conditions of the Sierra Leoneans. We build schools, we build uh, uh, churches, mosques. We help them in many ways. And we also learned from them so much, uh, borrowing from them best practices that we could get culturally and otherwise. We had to, to grasp the communication together with the locals by aid of um, the interpreters. 
so that we are able to communicate, bring them closer to us, so that um, at, at times we, we could learn their language one by one. It also assisted us because most of, of our officers were able to grasp their language very fast. The main question is, how do these various components achieve interoperability or synergy? A peacekeeping mission can only be successful if we have all components working together, hand in glove, to bring peace to a country. Working jointly with the police and the military is often a new experience for civilians who go in uh, peacekeeping because it is not normal. In our countries, we know the military stays in the barracks and when we see the police, actually our heart starts beating because we do not know what it is. But here, we start working together from the very top, from joint planning, uh, developing strategies that have got the same end goal. Because we must, we must have unity of purpose. We had the Joint Operations uh, Analysis Center. In that joint operations, we have the military, we have the police, and we have the civilian. So the work that all the civilians do, they have to report in that analysis center. The work that the police do has to be reported in the analysis center. The work that the military do has to be reported in the joint analysis center. The reason for the Joint Analysis Center is that we have to comprehend one another. KDF and Kenya in general takes pride in the many successful UN missions in which it has deployed its personnel. A favorite example is the UN mission in Sierra Leone between 1999 to 2006, which is one of the UN's most successful operations. Sierra Leone was a major success uh, story which the Kenyan Defense Forces, you know, uh, participated in as peacekeepers. Within three years, uh, we were able to turn things around in Sierra Leone and ensure that peace prevailed for the mandate, the UN mandate, you know, to be accomplished in Sierra Leone until um, uh, peace returned to Sierra Leone. Um, we disarmed you know, well over 77,000 uh, you know, rebels and uh, demobilized them. And when we left, or when I left, when I left, uh, Sierra Leone was now peaceful. The environment then in Sierra Leone where the people were depressed. There were no roads, schools were destroyed, no hostels. Of course, water, they had to walk for miles to get it. So, with partners, especially international uh, NGOs, uh, we, we did quite a lot, even with civil society, in terms of reconstructing uh, hostels, uh, constructions of school, and I remember very well that the Kenyan engineers really helped, um, KDF engineers really helped in building schools, rebuilding the hospitals that were destroyed by war, uh, digging boreholes. And these are the basic necessities where Sierra Leoneans felt depressed. So once we started extending uh, these services to the locals, we actually warn their, their, their hearts and minds. What makes the Kenyan peacekeepers stand out? Kenya played a pivotal role, um, especially because it wasn't from the region, in bringing peace to Sierra Leone. Uh, the soldiers, the troops, your colleagues, our friends, are a professional force. They have a lot of experience in peacekeeping operations and peace enforcement operations. So the collaboration between the forces and in particular the Kenyan forces was critical, I believe, to bringing peace to Sierra Leone um, during the early 2000s when it was at war. Peacekeepers uh, from Kenya have been deployed in over 29 
UN peacekeeping and African Union peacekeeping missions the world over. And that is a credit to Kenyan peacekeepers because if they go to one peacekeeping mission and misbehave, you can be sure they are not going to be invited back by either the African Union or the, the, the UN. So the fact that they have been invited over, over and again, they have gone and performed, there have been no scandals, they have not, been misbe they have not misbehaved, and so forth. And so it is really a big credit to uh, Kenyan peacekeepers. Peacekeeping is just one of the many tools to secure global peace and security. It is a collective enterprise. Standing alone, we can never succeed. But together, with partners, we are stronger and changing lives for the better. Kenya has contributed consistently since independence to these efforts of global peace building through peacekeeping. And we benefit because our people learn, we also become part of the global community in a deeper and stronger way. You know, as an African woman, as a person who's con who came from a country, my country went through conflict for over 12 years, and I've been to, I work in Liberia for over two years, and I've visited a lot of countries, Somalia, Central African Republic, South Sudan, DRC. I don't think we can say thank you enough to peacekeepers. I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. Nobody can explain to you the pain, the humiliation and indignity of war. Worst of all to a woman who has been raped several times. I mean, I met a lady in, in Kailau, in Sierra Leone, who had seven children by seven fathers. She doesn't know them. I met a lady in Jordan who had been raped 15 times. And the only people who put a stop to it are peacekeepers. That woman would never recover. But at least the pain stops. So, you know, all I can say to peacekeepers, thank you. Because you will never know how much people appreciate you and what you bring into it. Because you, they sacrifice their life, they go into countries that people are fighting. And it's citizens among them. Today's war is within countries. You come from a different country, you just try to give people a breathing space to, to restore their self-dignity, to give them hope that they can live. So the thing I can say to all peacekeepers is thank you. And thank you, and thank you.